All right. So today I want to talk a little bit about the amount of time that people, mostly entrepreneurs, claim they're working. So many entrepreneurs claim, like, I work 50 hours a week. I work 70 hours a week. I work 100 hours a week. And the reality is that a lot of you people who claim that you do all that work in a week, you're full of shit. You really are. And it's not even that you're lying to me that bothers me. It's that you're lying to yourself that bothers me. So I'll see a lot of these people and they'll talk about how many hours a week they work. And I want to talk about how claiming that you work so much is not only a lie to yourself, but it also harms yourself. It harms your business and it harms your life. So you say that you work 100 hours a week. So the first thing that I notice from a lot of people is this. They'll go to work and they'll spend a half hour talking to the receptionist or the person who sits up front. It may be about business or it may just be gossip about new business and new ideas. You call that work. I call that a half hour of wasted time. Then you'll go out and you'll decide, okay, I did a half hour of work and I just got to work. It's time for breakfast. I earned it. You'll spend an hour out somewhere getting breakfast. And you may be researching other businesses on your phone by Googling them or checking their Twitter. You call that work. I call that dicking around on Twitter and blogs. And that's, again, another hour. See, that's an hour and a half that you called work that I would call crap. Because really, what did you accomplish in that hour and a half? You may have shown up to work. You may feel like you're working. But what have you done that is going to bring you money right now? What have you done that's going to directly allow you to bill somebody? Or what have you done right now that's actually going to bring you money into the future? Nothing. And then you'll sit down at your desk and then you may actually start working. So for one or two or three hours, you may put an honest to God's good effort into doing whatever it is your job is or building whatever it is that you want to build at your business. And then you'll walk back up front again and you'll start talking to other people or then maybe you'll take a phone call or then maybe again you'll just start dicking around on the internet again. And that's another thing. A lot of people like they dick around on social media and they call it work when in reality they are not working at all. And it is one of the things that just kills me about this idea of the social media manager and how social media management is actually a job because you've actually created a job that's thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year where it's pretty much we're going to give you $40,000 a year to dick around on the internet. Make one or two snarky tweets a day, which takes you five minutes to do, and but spend the other six or seven, eight hours of your day dicking around on the internet. That's what that comes down to for a lot of people. And the other thing I want to talk about here with people who think that they are constantly working, I want you to actually look at what it is you're getting done. Make a list of specific tasks of things that you need to do and actually try to go through them in a specific manner and you will notice just how much time you make. I make these lists for myself all the time. Let's see if I have any that that come up here in uh, Notepad++, which I often use as my task manager. I don't, um, you know, I don't particularly... Let's see. Like, here's just a basic, silly, stupid example of one of the things I've done. Like, 520, ultrasonic this machine. 545, ultrasonic this machine. 6 o'clock, check the Wi-Fi circuitry on this MacBook Air. You know, again, it's just, I do, I make these lists for myself where I say, this is what I'm going to do at this time, this is what I'm going to do at that time, this is what I'm going to do at that time. And what I noticed when I made this list is, God, do I waste a lot of time on inconsequential shit and... Look at all these stuff that I used to allow to waste my time that shouldn't have been wasting my time. So if you make a list like this for yourself, you're going to realize, wow, I spent three hours on this one thing. What in God's name is wrong here? And one of the problems that I notice with other people is they feel like they're working. They'll talk while they're working. They'll say, oh, these aren't as sharp as they used to be. Let me find new tweezers. Actually, do I really want these tweezers? Let me see what other people talk about with tweezers. So they'll Google and they'll Google this brand of tweezers. And then they'll Google this versus Weha tweezers. And they'll see a post on the forum. And they'll register on the forum. And then they'll start talking on the forum and looking through the forum and introducing themselves on the forum. And man, what started out as let me replace the filter on this iPad turns into a three hour fucking unnecessary waste of time. And people, there's just this, this concept of time management that people don't get. But the thing is, you may have wasted three or five hours on each job that you did that day because you just, you just allowed yourself to veer off topic into this bullshit because you don't have a schedule. But the problem is you actually called that work. And that's the problem. When you say, I work 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week, if you spend two hours dicking around on a forum on the internet because you just decided that these tweezers don't feel the way they did before, 
That's not work. Work is when you sit down and you make a systematic list of every single little thing that you plan to do in the specific time frame. And then you go out there and you get it done. And if something comes up, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to live with this right now. But I'm going to put at the end of my list for the day, find new tweezer. What this does is it allows you to actually get a lot done over the course of a day. Again, at my business, I am the only one fixing boards. I have boards coming in from the East Village. I have boards coming in from other parts of Manhattan. I have boards coming in from Germany. I, I, have, I have machines coming in from all parts of the world, and I am the only one working on them. And every single one of them, well, 99% of them get an update in a fair amount of time. I, I'm not going to say all of them because that would just be... That would just be a lie. But 99% of them get updated in a fairly reasonable amount of time based on their problem. Uh, I have the time to, uh, to call and tell people how things are going, whether or not it's a clusterfuck, whether or not it's done. I have the time to manage my business. I have the time to grow my business. I have the time to clean around my business and make sure it doesn't become a mess. And all of that happens because I have a very strict schedule for what I'm doing over the course of my day. And the other thing that you need to realize is that if you're actually spending 60 or 80 or 100 hours a week, uh, week working, is that you're probably tired a lot of the time and you're probably working like a zombie. And this is another thing with people who are like, I work 60 hours a week, I work 80 hours a week as a badge of pride. Look at all the work I do. I spend 17 hours a day at the office working on the network today. <clears throat> I spend 10 hours today in the microscope. Yeah. I work all the time. And I don't care how many hours you claim you spend working. What I care about, the metric that I look at, is what did you get done today? What did you get done? How much of a mess is your business? How much of a mess is your life? This is what actually matters, and this is what nobody gives a fuck how many hours you work. If I give this customer back their board in three pieces, I can tell them I worked on it for 80 hours. They're going to want to put a bullet through my brain. If I, tell, if I give them back this board working within two hours, I could tell them that I worked on it for you know, seconds. They don't care. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares how much time you spend working on a project. What they care about are the results of that project. And the results of the project are often going to be based on how well rested you are, on how well your brain is working. So while you may be bragging as an entrepreneur or as a startup person that you work 80 hours a week, I'm bragging about the fact that I spend three hours today actually working. But you know what I did during those three hours that I was actually working that you weren't? What I did is that I got a lot of real good work done. I came in and I had a little stack on my desk of all these boards and I, I just defeated them. And then I have things I have to do for my website. I just got them done. And then I had something that I wanted to add or some picture I wanted to add or some to the site or some uh, organizational thing at work that I wanted to, to make better or some project for some other company that I have to write a proposal for. And I just get it done. And then I leave. And what happens as a result of this is all the work that I do is good, honest work. All the work that I do is stuff that, I, that is not going to cause me more hassle in the future. Now, when you're working all the time, when you are working 100 or 80 hours a week, you're constantly exhausted. And what happens when you're exhausted is you don't want to deal with solving a problem. You just want to get it away from you so that you can just relax and rest. Because when you're exhausted, you don't want to use analytical thinking. You don't want to have to explain things to people that are going to be a pain in the ass to explain to them. You don't want to uh, deal with issues head on. You don't want to create conflict with people head on. And as a result of not wanting to create that conflict, you're going to put these little crappy band-aids on all, all the problems in your life. You're going to not deal with the situation head on and actually fix what's wrong. So as a result of not actually implementing a, a proper solution, you're going to hear back from that one person or from that company or that employee is going to continue fucking something up because you don't have the, the, the energy in you to talk to them and say, listen, you've been screwing this up for this amount of time. Here are the examples of what you've screwed up. I want you to try doing it this way so that we don't have to deal with people getting angry anymore. Do you understand? Okay, you don't understand. Okay, let me teach you how to do this properly so that we never have to deal with this again. That may be a half hour. That's a half hour that you're not going to want to spend if you're at the end of 80 hours at work. So what's going to happen? They're going to keep screwing up. So 
and since you couldn't take out that half hour to talk to them because you're exhausted, you're going to have to spend 45 minutes three times a week fixing all their fuck-ups. And what you notice is that your 60-hour week that you were proud of now turned into an 80-hour week because you have all these extra fuck-ups that you have to clean up because you weren't able to clean them up from the beginning because you were too exhausted. So now you have an 80-hour work week. And now let's say you say, you know what? I'm going to take out some of the bullshit. I'm not going to post on the forums anymore. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit with the receptionist. I'm not going to take a one-hour breakfast just because I felt like I did a lot of work. And you get your work week down to 70 hours. But now you're still kind of exhausted because now you got to fix all those fuck-ups that are made from this one person who keeps fucking things up because you haven't worked with them and shown them how to do it right. So every time they make that particular fuck-up, it takes you 45 minutes of time to fix. And now your other employee starts screwing something up at the same time. Now you're right back up to maybe 75 hours. And now you don't have time to talk to the first one because you got to deal with the second person's screw up. And right before you're, you're just about to talk to the second person about their screw up, you screw something up because you're exhausted. And now that you screwed something up, it's going to take you maybe two hours to fix that. And then the two hours that you're not going to be, that you're working on fixing that one thing that you screwed up now because you're exhausted, the employee that's created, this new employee that's creating screw ups is creating one hour screw ups because they're creating screw ups on projects, not just on general device repair. And so then you say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to take out this other thing that I do at work and I'm going to spend less time on this, that, and the other and I'm just going to focus on fixing all these other fuck-ups. You create this little wheel. I know I'm long-winded in how I'm explaining everything, but you've kind of created this loop, this feedback loop where you're taking away the unnecessary parts of your business so you have more time to deal with the cluster fucks that resulted from you having unnecessary fluff and crap in your workday to begin with. And then you get to a point where you're not really really even uh, working where you're just trying to put out the fires as they happen and you're okay with the fact that your building is on fire. You're okay with your building being on fire. As long as your foot or your leg right in front of you is not directly on fire, you're happy. And that's a really sad way to live life. That's a really sad way to run a business and it is not sustainable long term. It leads to you losing your fucking mind and I know because I've been there and most people who start a business who um, started from having absolutely nothing and built it up from having having zero dollars to their name, started the same way. They started working all the time. But what you have to realize at one point is that you need to realize that you're probably not being as productive as you would be if you worked less. If you have a structured system in place, again, some stupid shit like this, where you just open Notepad++, you open the memo app on your phone and create shit that you're going to do within 15 minute or 30 minute or one hour increments, and you stick to it, I know that you're going to find a bunch of stuff that you do over the course of your day that you don't need to do because it's not in your list. And then you'll put it on your list if it's important. And then you'll realize that some of the things that are on your list may not be that important. Well, one of the things you may notice is that you're wasting a lot of time on things that you should not be wasting time on. So what I'm trying to say here is don't take pride in working 60 or 80 or 100 hours a week because all those people that are working 60, 80, 100 hour weeks, for the most part, they're not getting anything done. They're just chasing fires and putting out fires and, and constantly dealing with this little mess that's right in front of them because they weren't able to actually put a stop to it in the beginning. And then it just, it's, it's a really helpless, disgusting, miserable fucking feeling to have when you feel like there's nothing that can go right, when you feel like nothing you do is ever good enough, when you feel like there's... Every single time you try to solve a problem that it's not going to end right because you just have to pick up the phone for stuff to put out another fire or you have to take us, you know, another job back in to put out another fire or you have to deal with an employee that is creating a fire while you're putting out the other employee's fire. Like I'm telling you, if, if you deal, if you think that having an 80 hour work week is good, think again. If you think that you're actually working when you say I work 100 hours a week, Think again. You're probably not. Again, like th there was one employee that I had a long time ago. I, you know, he would be here all day. And he seemed to kind of not really like the fact that I would come to work a lot at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon and that I would leave at 7. But you know what happened when I came in at 3 or 4 in the afternoon? I'd have a stack of seven boards in my desk. They would be done by 7 o'clock. And at 6 to 30 or 7 o'clock, I noticed that my brain was kind of starting to turn into mush. And instead of staying here and then creating issues with the boards that I'm working on that will cause them to come back for warranty or staying really late, which would cause me to wake up late the next day, which would cause me to feel discombobulated, which would feel me to not do my job right at work, which would then cause me to take longer at work, which would then cause me to st have a longer work week, which would cause more stress, which would cause me to not come to work on time and work properly and, and just fuck everything up. I just decided, you know what? It's 6.30 or 7. I'm gone. 
And that model really, really worked very well. And you didn't seem to like that model very much or really understand why I did it. But the reason I did it is because, again, doing a lot of work or working hard has absolutely nothing to do with the amount of time that you spend sitting in the chair. It has nothing to do with the amount of time <coughs> that you spend thinking about your business. It has to do with what you get done with the time that is available to you. And if you make efficient use of the time that is available to you, then you're going to get a lot done with your business. But if you don't make efficient use of the time that's available to you, or you just chase every single thing that's right in front of you, like, hmm, I'm doing this repair. I don't like these tweezers. Let me research tweezers. Oh, there's a forum where people are posting about it. Oh, I know that guy. Oh, I'm going to post and talk to him. Oh, now I'm going to have an interesting conversation about business. Oh, now I'm going to learn something about, mm, from somebody else about business that while being interesting has absolutely nothing to fucking do with my work day. Oh, look, I got nothing done on my work pile. Oh, look, I got one or two things done on the pile of 100 things I got to get done. Again, I've made this mistake, and I assure you, it is a bad mistake to make, and you will pay for it with your sanity. If you continue down the path of saying, I am, gonna, I am working hard, I'm doing good work because I'm working 70 or 80 or 90 hours a week. No. When you notice that you can work 10 or 15 hours a week or 20 hours a week and you get all the stuff that you need done in your small business, you're probably doing a great job. And when you notice that you're working 80 or 90 or 100 hours a week, there's a good chance that all you're doing is putting out clusterfuck after clusterfuck after clusterfuck because you weren't able to set up a system to do everything right from the beginning. If you create a system that allows you to do everything right in the beginning or if you at the very least acknowledge problems as they arise in the beginning instead of just making up excuses as to why those problems are okay, you'll be fine. But if you just, again, if you say that oh, I'm working 80 or 90 hours a week and you're, you're dicking around on the internet or you're doing things at a silly pace and you're not keeping a timer for yourself on how much time you're spending on each one of these tasks, you're not going to get anything done. You're not going to have time to create your website. You're not going to have time to reorder inventory. You're not going to have time to contact your customers. You're not going to have time to fix anything. You're not going to have time to learn anything new. You're not going to have time to grow your business. All you're going to do is have 80 hours a week that you're spending to go insane.